take a look at this headline from the Atlantic Wire. Quote, John Boehner's negotiations are going worse than John Kerry's. Harsh, but kind of true. After a month dominated by headlines focused on Syria, will we strike, should we strike, what other options exist, Secretary Kerry and his Russian counterpart have shown us a flicker of light at the end of the tunnel. But poor Speaker Boehner, his woes are just getting started as congressional Republicans get back to more important business matters. Obamacare. 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 The atrocity of Obamacare. Obamacare is not controversial. It is universally despised. How about we defund the whole damn thing? You don't hear the president mention Benghazi. Now it's a phony scandal. The American people deserve answers about Benghazi. We must have a select committee to look into Benghazi. Somebody in the White House is lying. That's right. With only four legislative days left before the government runs out of money and about a month until we hit the debt ceiling, the main issues topping the GOP agenda are to defund Obamacare and reopen Benghazi Gate. Ah, with me now to discuss Washington Post political reporter Jackie Kucinich and Jamal Simmons, Democratic strategist and principal at the Rabin Group. Thanks to you both. Jackie, I want to start with you because, you you know, reading some of these stories, you have to wonder who is actually in charge. I mean, here you had, you know, this. there was a continuing resolution that they were going to try to vote on this week. And then there was a sort of a gimmick that uh, Boehner thought he could try as a way to get the House to vote, get it over to the Senate, make it so that the Senate didn't have to, you know, defund Obamacare. And he got called out for it. They had to pull that continuing resolution. I mean, who's in charge? It's been a mess. Uh, and, you know, in the midst of that, you had the Senate Conservatives Fund, uh, which is a group that Jim DeMint started that he now is no longer affiliated with, calling some of these members, pushing them to vote against or to oppose the resolution you were just talking about. So there are outside pressures coming in. And, you know, these people don't want to be primaried. So you, you're seeing a lot of that at play. And Republican leaders, frankly, don't have anything to offer them anymore. There's no more earmarks. They don't care about committee assignments. So their hands are tied. So they're really just trying to figure out what to do at this point. But it also seems to me, I mean, this gimmick, we saw Speaker Boehner do this with a sort of second version of the Violence Against Women Act, right, where he wanted to introduce something that his members could vote on, even though it wasn't the real Violence Against Women Act. And that work made everybody happy. In this instance, the fact that he had to pull the CR, that like even the, he got called out by his own party uh, for it, suggests to me that he is definitely losing power within his own caucus. I mean, we've seen this with a couple different debates where he's had some issues with with uh, some of the conservatives in his caucus. And there's more of them. And even in addition to the conservatives, we have the people that are playing the long game and don't want to, again, don't want to be primaried. So they do not have the tools they used to have to force these people to vote. And you're seeing it and we're going to keep on seeing it. And we're going to be here very late on September 30th as a result. <laughs> you know, Jamal, <laughs> one of the things you wrote this week about uh, sort of the ongoing uh, conversation about Syria, but kind of from a diff, taking a different position. I mean, it was astounding to see, I think, and actually very, you know, it made me feel good to see members of Congress actually attending briefings and, you know, paying attention to the, you know, the materials that they were given and actually asking good questions and having a real debate. The point that you made, uh, I'm just going to read this from an article you wrote this week. The White House should engage on domestic issues the way they did on Syria, but negotiations with the House GOP may be even more difficult than Russia in Syria. Jamal, talk a little about what you meant in that. Well, I think where we are right now in the country is that, uh, as you guys have been talking about with Jackie, there's so much uh, that has to be done here. And we know what's coming up now. We've got immigration coming up. We've got the debt ceiling coming up. We've got budget negotiations that have to be dealt with. But at the same time, we've still got folks who are out there trying to get jobs. There's a great story in the New York Times last week or maybe about 10 days ago. And it had this tragic kind of um, anecdote about this uh, white mechanic in Tennessee who was out shooting deer and, uh, and squirrels to feed his family because the food stamps that he gets aren't enough um, to make it work. The president and the Congress need to be focused a little bit more on these kinds of situations and people who are in this situation and, and use the kind of shock and awe that 
we saw, as they talked about Syria, to talk about the economic straits that people are in. And are you saying you would want to see more engagement for the from the White House? Because it seemed like there was a little bit of a critique on the on the White House coming out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know the president in the White House. Uh, you know, and I've been a supporter of the president since he ran in the primaries. Um, but the president in the White House has got to do a better job of marshaling all their forces, send the cabinet out, bring in experts, uh, have the president do a primetime address. If the Congress votes down bills, keep sending them there. The Republicans we've just saw, they voted down 40 times uh, to get to defund uh, Obamacare. That'd Let's be 41, the- actually. <laughs> right now, it's over 40. <laughs> not, to, not to, you know, I just don't want that 41st vote to, to go unmentioned. You know, Jack, so let, let's see. Let's ahead. see more of that. Let, like, let's embarrass the Congress and get them in the, and, and, and make them have to answer for the fact they don't want to focus on what's going on in the country. You know, Jackie, to that point, I mean, one of the things that we heard time and time again from members during this Syria conversation is how they were really listening to their constituents, the phone calls and the emails and at the town hall meetings. But if you take a look, for example, at Obamacare, right, where their agenda is all about uh, defunding or, you know, delaying Obamacare, the polls generally show a, a relative amount of support for Obamacare and, and a, a, a greater number of people who don't want to see Obamacare defunded, right? They want to see how it works. They want it to have its funding. They don't want it necessarily uh, repealed. So why, to this point that Jamal's making, why can't we put a little bit more pressure on conservatives to say, hey, if you're really listening to what your constituents are saying, here's what they're saying, and it's not the same thing that you're saying. Well, it's important to point out, I mean, there are some polls that say exactly what you said, but the law is still very unpopular. It it still is, when you look at a summary of polls, it's still in the 40s and and people don't approve of it. Uh, The majority don't approve of it. So while they don't want to see it go away... They also don't approve of it. So I think they're looking at all of these numbers saying, what's going on here? And, you know, Republicans are taking advantage of that, particularly if you look at the age groups. Younger people like the bill or I'm sorry, the law and older people don't. And and, and so in the, the, the people that vote are still the older people. Well, actually, true, but younger people are voting in larger numbers. And, you're and you're right. And but in, when you look at Republican districts, a lot of them are older people. Right. All right. Thank you, Jackie Kucinich and Jamal Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. Next, strippers and labor rights. Four of our favorite headlines you might have missed this week. We were nothing 236 years ago. Today we are strong. Maybe someday, Egypt, you'll be strong enough to build something lasting. (laughs) 